When the, uh, the, the, the diocesan priests met with Archbishop Mark for the first time uh, back last summer, if you remember, it was in the middle of that great heat wave uh, that we had. And of course, where was I in the middle of this great heat wave, meeting the Archbishop for the first time? I was stuck here in quarantine because I had COVID. But I still managed to go to the, uh, the priest's meeting in Cardiff, albeit digitally. And throughout the morning, I was passed from pillar to post um, on somebody's laptop. And at one point, somebody pressed a button and muted Archbishop Mark. So all I had was Archbishop Mark, uh, his uh, lip lips uh, moving. But when he picked it up and somebody thought, oh gosh, Father's on uh, mute, and they unmuted me, one of the striking things about Archbishop Mark's uh, conversation to the priests was his reflection on Christendom, on our, our, our culture, our society has been a, have, having Christian foundations, if you like. And he strikingly reflected that Christendom is dead. What he was saying, in other words, was that our contemporary society, the place in which we inhabit and live and flourish, is now beyond Christian foundations. We live in a world beyond Christian morals and values. There's no Christian frame of reference anymore. Those Christian values um, have diminished. Trying to live an authentically Christian life in the 21st century will, more often than not, I'm sure, leave us at a juxtaposition with the movement of the contemporary world. And we can see this played out within our society, can we? And we can also see it particularly uh, strikingly and very polarized, polarizing in places like America. I found it interesting to note that Archbishop Mark has recently published his uh, official response to uh, the diocesan part of the Synod uh, journey, his, his official response, which is on the Facebook and on the parish website. And what's interesting is that he brings up this theme again towards the conclusion of his official response. And I think it's worth a, a little reflection. He says this. It is often said today that Christendom is dead in our societies. We no longer live in a time when most people know what we are talking about when we proclaim belief in Jesus Christ. And when we stop and think, we think, gosh, actually that's quite true, isn't it? He doesn't offer this reflection to us in order to depress us. This is not something for which we should give up and resign ourselves to such a dramatic loss and so perhaps just allow Christianity to die with dignity. He's not saying anything like that. Archbishop Mark is offering us a reality check. What he is saying is that we cannot approach our contemporary world only by measuring it on the idealized world of a past which has gone. The context and the standards of the past are not the same as they are now, today, in the 21st century. We need something new. We need to enter a new era, if you like. And he reiterates this in his synod response. And it's something that we as a parish reflected upon back last summer after I come out of quarantine, of course. And these are Archbishop Mark's words. He says this, For we now live in a new apostolic era in which the gospel is to be proclaimed afresh from the housetops. And a new apostolic era, a new way to be able to proclaim afresh the good news to respond generously and with integrity, as we hear Zephaniah proudly proclaim, to our own baptismal callings, to equip ourselves to become credible witnesses to his good news, and so to be, to be able to proclaim afresh from those housetops, as Archbishop Mark reflects. Now, if you are going to go onto your roofs this afternoon 
and proclaim from your housetops, please do a risk assessment before going up any ladders. This is something new for us, isn't it? Something exciting. Just as exciting as those who were in the first apostolic age. We cannot drag contemporary culture, contemporary society, back to a Christendom which no longer exists. We can try to do this. We can try and plan our initiatives, our evangelization strategies upon this. And these will never get us very far. And in the end, they will inevitably break down. We move forward in confident hope into this new apostolic era filled with joy and expectant hope filled with the outpouring and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And the, the readings which we have been journeying with and reflecting upon over this month of January, this month of new beginnings, have helped us because they've taken us all the way back to those first principles of our faith, beginning with our baptismal calling, reflecting upon how this looks in the world, who we are fundamentally and what God is calling us to be. And so today, in today's gospel, as we hear the beginning of that wonderful Sermon on the Mount with the so famous and so popular uh, reflection on the Beatitudes, we take that next step. And while these Beatitudes are so famous to us, so popular, they do continue to speak to us, not just on, on one level, but in so many different levels. And we begin to help us to unpack of what it is to make that step into the new apostolic era. How does this look? Because we can look at it on a surface level, and we can say, well, these uh, Beatitudes are what we could call blueprints of our Christian living. They remind us that authentic discipleship, that authentic happiness, if you like, is more than what the world can ever have to offer us. Our Lord turns everything onto its head. And as we begin to journey, as we begin to step further and further into this apostolic era, as we begin to get deeper in our faith, these same attitudes offer us something more. What do they offer us? The very self-portrait of Jesus, to quote uh, a, the famous spiritual writer, Father Henry Nouwen. And Father Henry Nouwen reflects upon how these Beatitudes show us what it really means to be in the world and not of the world as we begin to tentatively step into this new apostolic era. He says that when we model our lives on his, our whole new world will open up for us. Some wonderful world, uh, words to set that groundwork in this apostolic era. If we are to really take hold of this apostolic age as it opens before us, and the part that each of us are called to play in it, then all of us have to begin upon with that clear vision of who Jesus is. We need to be able to look at that self-portrait again with fresh eyes. For as this apostolic age opens up before us, we recognize that it is his life who we are modeling our lives on. It is him whose voice we speak from the rooftops. It is his gospel we live and proclaim to the whole world with fresh ears, with fresh hearts. Amen.